Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I have been away for a couple of weeks because of a little summer break, but I am back and I unpacked um, my little package from Tim Holtz with the new uh, Distress Halloween uh, mica stains and also the paste, uh, the Grit Paste Glow, very very exciting, the Grit Paste Crypt. Uh, awesome for use in your Halloween makes. Um, yeah, definitely a favorite. And the texture paste black. I mean, uh, the possibilities are endless. And I will show you, and I want to show you, how I am going to use these materials, these sprays and the pastes, in a couple of makes in the next couple of videos. For today's video, I am going to work with the Distress Mica Stain Malt Cider in combination with the Fallen Acorn. And also the specimen will join this party. This is the card that we are going to create. Um, I also got out an embossing folder and um, a die cut, these flowers and leaves. And besides that, I also have some ink, some archival ink black suit to give those um, creased areas, so the downwards areas, a little more color and contrast. Now no more talking, let's get going! My starting point is a piece of watercolor paper. You will have a more textured side and also a smooth side. Uh, I will use this paper with the smooth side up. Before spraying the stains, I will give it a little bit of a water spray on top um, so your mica stain can maybe flow a little bit more. And I'm going to start with the malt cider. Um, yeah, no technique needed or something, just spray around on some areas that you would like or prefer. And make definitely sure that you will dry this layer before adding some extra stains. My next go-to is the Fallen Acorn color. Um, I am always making sure to give it a good, good shake before use, so the mica can spread uh, throughout the whole bottle. Um, I just sprayed it around a little bit and activated a little bit more with some water. And again, we'll dry this layer. I have leftover product on my craft sheet. I will wet it down with some water, uh, pull my fingers through to break up the color a bit. And after that, um, you can pick up those uh, drops with the watercolor paper that you already colored. You can repeat these steps over and over again until you are satisfied with the result or until your product is no longer on the craft sheet. And again, dry your layers in between. The beauty of the mica stains is that you can build layer up on layer. So I'm going to um, use another color, the specimen color. Just going to spray it onto my craft sheet, do the same technique again, water it down and pick up some of the drops. For now I have a wonderful background, a great base to work on, so now to decide what to use. I decide to go for an embossing folder from Sizzix and Tim Holtz. Uh, I pulled it through the machine two times and this is straight out of the embossing folder how it looks. Look at all those beautiful details, I mean wow. Um, and I also would like to uh, make more contrast in those creased downwards areas. So I got out my archival ink black suit and smeared it um, inside of the embossing folder and pulled it through the machine two times again. And now the reveal. Look at that contrast and that darker color in those creases. I think it is very, very cool. Uh, you can repeat this step with the ink multiple times if you would like to make it even darker. For this card, I would like a backing. I got out some craft colored paper and cut it into the right size, just with an extra edge on all sides of the card. 
For a little bit more roughness, I got out my paper distressor and I will pull it and drag it along all sides of my card and also along all sides of my backing paper. The only thing uh, to consider is when you yeah, press the paper distressor on the sides of the embossed uh, areas, they can tear. I do not mind, but if you do not like it, um, just be gentle with uh, rubbing your paper distressor up and down. I'm going to ink up all sides of the card and also of the backing paper. I got out my archival ink, ground espresso and a blending tool. This ground espresso is a little bit of a darker brown color because I do not like the clear areas. I want them more worn and aged. Besides the inking, I love my stitching, so I'm going to stitch along all four sides. And this is how it looks like in a close-up. I like the shine of the stain. I love the embossing folder, love the stitching. Yeah, we are well on our way. Now on to some embellishing for this card. I got out a die set from Sissix and Tim Holtz, the vintage labels, and I'm going to ink up the raised areas with my uh, archival ink ground espresso so I can stay in the same color scheme. I will cut some flowers out of regular white cardstock. This is the number 664164. Um, I just cut out some. Uh, I do not know yet which I'm going to use. It is just about playing around and trying stuff out and see what you like and prefer most. I made my choice and I have chosen these two leaves and flowers for this project. I think they are quite white for right now, so I'm going to color them a little bit more. I pulled out my malt cider again to stay in the same color scheme, sprayed a little bit on my craft sheet and yeah, I'm just tapping the ends of the leaves and a little bit of the stem into the color. No heavy pressure is needed. You just want some specks and drops on the white cardstock um, and you do not want to have it covered in total. So just begin with a slight pressure and you can build it up as you go. While the flowers are drying on the side, uh, I will get out some vintage photo distress ink and I can work on my label. I will put the ink on my craft sheet, wet it down a little bit um, and I will get my label and dab it into the color because I want some staining um, on top of the label and make it a little bit more um, aged. I also want to bring in the malt cider color again. Um, just spray a bit on a craft sheet. And when you have like um, a white brush, uh, a small one I am using, you can splatter around a little bit and create little splatters on top of the label. I still have leftover product on my sheet, so I'm going to tap the sides of the label inside of the color. Let this dry before we go to the next step. I will use some embossing ink and some fine, super fine uh, embossing powder, white, um, a stamp with the word flower, uh, and I will stamp that on top of the label and a little bit more to the right side because on the left side I will glue down my flowers. Always make sure to heat set your embossing powders so it will melt and it will stay on the paper. Mm -hmm. 
now that the label is done, it is time to glue it down on top of the card. Um, I'm doing that with a Distress Collage Medium Matte. Um, and besides gluing it down onto the right spot, uh, I also decided to stitch along the sides because I really like that effect. And I also leave the longer threads on there. I want my embellishment on the left side a little bit more layered, so I got out a piece of mummy cloth, stained it a little bit with my ink and also with the malt cider, and it will be uh, a layer underneath the flowers. On top of that, I will also add some loose threads. And now we have a good base uh, for our flowers, so it is time to glue them down. To decorate my embellishment a little bit more, I found these two cute little buttons that I will glue on top of each other. I also found some raffia and made a little bow out of it. Now I can glue uh, down my second piece of flower uh, just to get a good overview of how everything will look and where I can place uh, my leftover items and that is the bow and the buttons. I want my buttons to be on top of the bow and I'm going to attach them with a needle and a thread. Just make a couple of turns inside and outside and then knot it on top of the top button. Underneath the bow I would like some extra layers, so I got out a piece of mummy cloth, uncolored, just natural color. On top of that some pieces of moss, also in a white, uh, white off-white kind of color. Just gluing it down with my glue gun and also a dot of glue underneath the bow. And there you go, you are done. This was my video for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and got some inspiration out of it. If you want to check out me or uh, some other works that I made and created over the last couple of months, go check out all my links in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Bye!